Hello and welcome to another Guardian Workshop video. I'm your host Dewey and this is another uh, Not All Those Who Wonder Are Lost community interviews. This week I'm joined by Matt Light. Um, and I thought I'd, Hi get, guys. I thought I'd get Matt on to uh, look at the game in a slightly different way from the way that me and you have spoken about many times. Um, because you're more of a you're more of the gaming side rather than or, or list building at least. Yeah, I think I'll end up saying some quite controversial things, um, not necessarily deliberately. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, I'm going to start off with the kind of your personal hobby. How did you get into SPG? So, I mean, if this time around, with all of the sort of miniatures I have surrounding me. Um, is one story, but if we go all the way back, which I think is what people really mean, that people want to hear about sort of your memories of like battle games in Middle Earth. My, my very first memory um, of these little plastic soldiers was, was I think maybe in like a John Lewis, a department store like oh, that. Oh, hi, bro. Because the, first, because the first box sets were sold everywhere, I seem yeah. to remember. I was going to say, um, I remember and them like, being a lot, in a lot of places. Yeah, and I, I remember seeing it there and thinking that looks really cool, but definitely it being sort of in the price, the original starter set, so sort of elves against Moria goblins. Yeah. Um, and I remember sort of thinking that looks really cool, but probably not in the sort of impulse gift for your nagging child kind of um, price yeah. range. Um, and then next, it's Battle Games in Middle Earth. It's buying it from the sort of corner shop near school for two pounds for 12 Moria goblins, which I must have bought sort of like five of, and then you've got <laughs> 60 Moria goblins that you're that at that age you're never ever going to paint. Um, oh, God, no. God, no. yeah, and then sort of trying to recreate the Battle of Five Armies with proxy miniatures on my like friend's nice. bedroom floor with sort of terrain made out of everything. They're my sort of early memories. Um, and then I sort of war gamed in various war games, uh, in my sort of early teenage years. And then I switched to card games to sort of fuel that competitive edge. Um, yeah, I was going to say, because you're really... known, I know you're known in the SPG community for being a big Magic the Gathering player as well. Or at least you were. Yeah, 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 I used to be. Um, and then what sort of brings me back to wargaming full circle is I stopped playing as much Magic when I started playing D&D about three or four years ago. Um, and it turns out role-playing games are just the best games because all you <laughs> want to do is tell stories with your mates. Um, and then I started buying miniatures um, for my role-playing games to represent okay. things on little maps when we were playing. Um, and that's how I started picking up Lord of the Rings miniatures because when you think of an orc, you think of a Lord of the Rings orc. When you think of an elf, you think of either a high elf Lord of the Rings or a wood elf Lord of the Rings. Same with dwarves. All of the miniatures are perfect for representing what they represent and they're such a beautiful range. Um, and then I realized I had loads of them. Um, then I played a little bit of Battle Companies, played the Battle Companies event at Warhammer World, won yep. that, oh, nice. um, went to Seven Stones that year, which was year before last, because um, someone knew someone that didn't have a partner but had a ticket. So I went and played with a stranger, had a great time, and awesome. then played from then. Because did, you, did you get into the community with anyone in particular? Like, are you friends? Because I know you're yeah. near Nottingham, aren't you? Yeah, so Barney Menzers um, yeah. was my in because he um, his store started life um, by largely he started trading Magic the Gathering singles, yeah. built built up, built up, built up, and now has a brick and mortar store. Yeah, um, and he'd sort of said throughout the last like five years how <laughs> good this Lord of the Rings game was. Um, but getting into war games is like it's such a high barrier to entry, isn't it? Because if you haven't done it from a young age and you and like the initial input of price, I know it can put Yeah, exactly. Off. And and just sort of And if you've never painted if you've never painted a mini before, it can also be a little bit daunting, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean I'm my challenge to myself this year, which I've really only started doing anything about in the last two months, is like trying to actually get good at painting and act, act, and it's not even getting good at it, it's just trying. I yeah. mean, because most of my miniatures are just sort of like base, wash, maybe a dry brush if there was enough time between the first stages in the tournament that weekend. <laughs> um, but now I'm sort of trying to like force myself to learn how to highlight and things. But 
ultimately, if you don't feel confident in your painting, every miniature is just some sort of like hell test where you like pick up this thing that you like want to be good, that you've spent money on, that you know you're going to have to show your peers Yes. Who can do this. And then you're holding the paintbrush and you're like, I'm just not very good at this. Um, <laughs> and getting, I think if you, you're not from a sort of artistic background, um, things like applying highlights to a miniature that comes so easily to you when you've done it a thousand times, yeah. you're just looking at it and you're like, what? Like, like, what, like, like, okay, so I'm looking at this face, like I, I, the cheekbones, they need to be highlighted and the nose and maybe the, maybe the eyebrows. And then you, then you think, okay, if I do those, then you do them and you're like, well, now he just looks like a clown. <laughs> you just, just have like stripes and, uh, across, don't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and you think, and the problem is, is that like, there's this, there is this stage where all your minis are going to look crap. Yeah. Um, between like trying and succeeding. Um, I was going to say, I only, I, then again, I know, I know in the last three years I've repainted a few things but now I'm mm. happy with them and like even when I've like I've, I've repainted some of my fiefdoms that I won a, a runner-up best painted with at my very first tournament and I repainted them because <laughs> I was like no they're not, they're not good enough yeah and and for me it's like I, I have to like really sort of <clears throat> look at people's models quite carefully when I play them to try and get my own confidence up because I look at things and I think wow that that army looks amazing because yeah. basically like more more of the armies that you see at a tournament than not look great on the table right I, I, I like, definitely, i've definitely noticed a market improvement in the last 18 months two years mm. then, and i'll tell you why that will be it will be because everyone's coming back to it as grown-ups and yeah. like taking the time and really yeah. like caring about it rather than just you know sort of having a bit of a go um, but but you pick up a model that looks amazing from distance and you look at the highlights and stuff and you just think, oh, actually, this is just like, not basic, but it's just lines. I could do that. Yeah. And, and sort of getting out of the habit of sort of like cheating. So like, if you put any model on a snow base, it looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like genuinely, like, have you ever seen an army on snow bases that from a distance on the tabletop, you didn't think looked amazing? No. And it's like, no, because they just, no. they just draw the eye away from the miniature. It looks bright. Yeah. And I do, I, do, just, yeah, I, do, I do think a base makes a hell of a difference to a... Oh, yeah, and there's this sort of... Difference. Back in, back in you know, um, like 15 years ago when we were, when, I was a, when I was 15, there yeah, people didn't have little flowers on their bases. Like, that wasn't a thing back then. <laughs> Whereas now, you look at people's armies and look like they're sort of cavorting through some gorgeous meadow. I was going to say, I thing. know my fiefdoms have got loads of flowers on them. And, yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna build. A, I'm gonna do a fiefdoms army later this year, and they're gonna be on flowers. I've yeah. not decided what flowers. Am I gonna like <laughs> try and coordinate the flowers with the colours of the stuff? Like it's crazy. Yeah, as you say, you that's do. that's what I tried to do. I kind of went, oh, does that one look right with that colour? Does that one look right with that colour? And mm. you kind of go, oh, actually, yeah, that's right. So coming on yeah, to so... coming on to the hobby as a whole, what's your favourite aspect? Uh, building building army lists. Building, building army lists. lists is the best. Um, I watched your one of these with Dan, um, and I was thinking about what some of my answers would be. Um, and so, like my fate, my the perfect tournament for me would be. I was thinking about this. Like the the most the most perfect tournament for me that's like feasibly could maybe happen. Yeah. Would be a two day event. It would be escalation. So you'd have like five hundred points day yeah. one, eight hundred points day two, and good versus evil. Because then I'd have to make four lists. <laughs> and that would be brilliant. I learned last year that my least favorite part about um, the tournament season and tournaments in general is the week between list submission and the event. Uh, yeah. Because there's just because there's just nothing there. It's like the twilight zone. And when when a, the odd tournament comes around where you can build your list all the way up till um, the day, like uh, the, like, like the GT. GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm literally there in the morning, like with my list not written in Bugman's, sort of scratching my head, being like. <laughs> If I drop these two, if I drop these two shields on these guys, or better, drop these Moranans with spears and shields down into regular orcs, you get the two, you get four points. Yeah. Then you drop a tracker, and suddenly you've got like a whole Moranan with spear shield, and it's just like brilliant. Like that's <laughs> that's what I'm about. Absolutely. And um, and and on the flip side, least favorite aspect of the hobby. Uh, I remember having a really good answer for this, but I've it's I've forgotten it. <laughs> um, my least favorite aspect. Um, I think it it sort of goes hand in hand with this one. Is it's the sort of community, various aspects of the community when you are looking at lists and the way the game is played. 
um, people can, oh, which I have two answers. This is my first one. Um, <laughs> it's people that like, when people are like, I really like, so I really like uh, granular sort of games where I can like take this warband from here and this warband from here and sort of see what I can come up with. I was going to say, um, me, me and you writing lists are very different. And we've had this discussion. Oh, yeah, times. absolutely. When, I, when you said to Dan, yeah, I'm all about the pure list. And I thought, right, okay. I mean, <laughs> how, how, how much better is a high elves going to be than, you know, Rivendell going to be than some high elves and some heroes? Ooh. Yeah, uh, yeah, in time. Um, but no, my least favourite part of the hobby is the games. Uh, I, I don't really enjoy the games. <laughs> that's, that's just... That's the controversial thing. <laughs> I just, I just don't like. I like writing lists. I, I would have as much fun at a tournament if I wrote a list and gave it to someone else to play than playing it myself. Well, you um, should try that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I gave, um, I give, I give my lists out like quite happily before tournaments, and like I'm perfectly happy for yeah. people to play them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the games because the games are just sort of. Um, I know who I'm better than for the most part. Like I've got yeah. like a pretty good judge of my abilities, I think. And I know I'm definitely sure of who's better than me. Um, I was gonna say, you've, you've, they you've, been, you've me. been around long enough, like, like I have and like Kalman and Dan have to know kind of where you sit in the grand yeah, scheme and, of and, things. And you can tell sort of very early on in games by like, there are, there are all these sort of, like tells when someone shows up at the table aren't they you can see like how confident they are yeah. like whether you recognize them in a small community is a big thing yeah. um and that sort of thing and and also the lists i play tend to be quite um like they have like very focused pieces that are doing very focused things so it means the games tend to be like for want of a better term like they're not sort of set up to be very fun um yeah so for example, you're, like, you're very much going in with a not win at all costs at all, but a list. But it's, it's an army that's designed to, to build, to, it's an army that's built to win a game. And yeah. so like this model is over here doing this thing and this model's over here doing this thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure what those things are going to be before we've rolled any dice. And, yeah. and I, I've noticed that like, even if I try very hard to be pleasant during a game, the armies I'm playing aren't necessarily like that great. Like, like for example, yeah. in Destroy the Supplies, um, the Spider Queen can sort of realistically get all of the supplies in like a turn. Yeah. Um. So, you, so you sort of go like turn one mover, turn two mover, get out the broodlings, run them to supplies, blow them all up, and yeah. there's not a lot of counterplay to that. So, like, as yeah. however much you compliment your opponent's army and like tell them they're a nice guy and sort of you know say they have a magnificent beard and how fun it was like they know they didn't have fun like yeah, they, uh, they yeah. know they know they didn't have fun um, i was gonna say I, I play angmar so i know i've played uh yeah. liam freel before and gone ah oh, you've got your boromir the white tower and Hurin as your two heroes cool i've got witch king two barrow whites and burda boromir yeah. was dead turn two mm. um turn two or three and then Hurin died the next turn it's like right there's no, there's not much you can do about it yeah, but and, that's and how some, and plays. You, yeah, and you get a lot of games where, and that the issue with like with armies with like big heroes like that is that normally there are a bunch of troops to go with them, and if you kill the heroes, the game probably still goes on for about forty more minutes. And yeah. but actually, all you're doing is killing all their models. Yeah, and it's like oh, that wasn't very fun. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, you... the, genuinely, Ooh. the games are like, well, I build I build lists to see if the lists can win tournaments. Yeah. And then they do or they don't. It's if if that if I could sort of just sort of simulate that. You know, like when you played like Total War games. Yeah. You could like play out the battles, or you yeah. could just sort of auto build your resolve. armies and auto resolve. Around. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like you might play, and you'd play one game, and then you'd sort of go uh, play one battle, and be like, oh, actually, that was like thirty-five minutes. I could have just auto resolved that and done like I could have conquered <laughs> France by now. Yeah. You um, say that I'm I'm playing Medieval Two at the moment. Um as like a bit of a side thing from the hobby. So how do you find the balance between uh, building models or terrain, painting them, playing, list writing in your case, kind of, do you have a balance that you try and achieve or? Oh no, no, no. no. Just um, as it comes. I'm, I'm thinking about army list <laughs> daily. Like, I'll, like at work, you might, people <laughs> might think I'm like doing detailed calculations quite a lot, but actually I'm just like jamming things into a calculator Yeah. Um, to see <laughs> yeah. like, how many models I can get. And a lot of the time it's a list that I've sort of thought about three weeks ago, but just like forgotten how many orcs there are in it. Okay. And that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah and and you'll often find myself if you if you're someone i talk to about lists a lot you find that occasionally i'll send a message just like how many iron hills dwarves feels like a lot <laughs> that, that's a common question um I know we've, or, we've spoken is, about half trolls and kind of Mahood stuff because you've seen me run them before. Yeah. And, and they're not seen that often. Mm, part of my sort of secret to like getting good quickly and learning quickly is that like basically every tournament I went to, if I saw someone with a list that I thought was cool with models that I hadn't really thought about, I'd literally just add them on Facebook the next day and message them and be like, right, tell me everything about Corsairs. Yeah. Tell me everything about this army was really interesting how did you do what went wrong like why didn't you win the tournament that sort of thing um because everyone's dead keen on talking about themselves oh yeah like, why, and why do their you, armies why, and everything like everyone why, loves it why do you think we're doing this <laughs> yeah um and yeah i think that that's really quite important to, to trying to improve is sort of just like absorbing all the information because it is out there but it's it's not like if you started playing uh, league of legends and everything yeah everything you could possibly want to know is easily accessible on the internet. Like there aren't just, there aren't like, I mean, now there probably are sort of six, eight articles about how to play Moran and Orcs. But when the game was, when the rules were re-released year before yeah. last, there weren't. No. There were maybe two that you could find. So the people were quite important. So moving on to your collection, how big is it? And what armies, or I know in your case, what model do you use? So I've got so I've got a full Harad army with like a Mumuk and um, like twelve of all the specialist troops and sort of thirty five warriors and all the heroes. Yeah. Um, because when I started playing, I bought that for one hundred and twenty quid painted. Um, well, I know because um, I've played against that. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah I kind of got it much before that tournament actually. <laughs> um, and then I've got quite a big Mordor army. Um, because um, my theory for games is like, actually, we'll get to that later. Quite a big Mordor army. I've got a big, horrendously painted Rohan army. It's <laughs> like it's like it's so badly painted that like it was like speed painted over like three days before a tournament. And oh wow! It's, and, and like I, I I definitely can't paint now. Like two years ago, I definitely definitely couldn't paint. Um, it's so bad that I just like wouldn't really consider getting out the box. Okay. Um, and I didn't get I didn't get Thaerden painted in time either. So it's like a, a painted Rohan army without Thaerden. So like for me to be able to play it, <laughs> I would have to paint him. Um, and then he looked much better than the rest of the army. So it, it'll be a mess. Um, I have cracked open the Thaerden box though to get um, one of the heads to convert a Braga for my oh, Lake nice. Town. Um, I've got yeah, I've got a small Lake Town guard army of about thirty models and all the heroes. Um, I've got a few high elves because Kurdan was really good. Um, some wood elves, uh, a very very small army of Thor army. So I've got a, I've got bits and bobs, but for the most part, I can't actually field more than about like four hundred points, five hundred points, apart from Harad and Mordor. Okay. Because that's not how I build my armies. No, no. <laughs> um... Oh, one model I'm really proud of. Um, again, it's it's not very well converted, but I. I was going to say um, my next question was your favorite mini. favorite model. Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite <laughs> mini is the old Radagast model. Oh, nice. Um, where where he looks like a cool druid with like a bird and a yeah. staff. And yeah, I've, I've got I've his... got that one, and I've converted one on a horse, which I'm dead proud of. So. Yeah, my favorite model I own is my um, converted Radagast on a horse. Oh, nice! And it's the it's the Gandalf the White on Shadowfax like charging model. Yes. You know where um, Shadowfax is like in sort of full jump almost. Yeah, this is the two towers kind of more common mounted one. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Easy to pick up for like three quid. Um, yeah. And you and I've repositioned the staff, so instead of going up, it's going forwards more like a lance, and then giving it the a staff from one of the metal Radagasts. Yeah. So it's got his, um, like, stony staff, and then sort of green stuffed a hood, and obviously if you paint that miniature brown, it doesn't look much like Gandalf anymore. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah. he's, like, really, like, he's, like, properly, like, aggro Radagast. Nice. Um, yeah. And kind of on a similar similar level, what's your most underrated model in your collection? kind of that could be a pose a sculpt um rules whatever mm, uh, you so, like so um in terms of um like models i think basically the whole harad line is amazing 
every time I pick one up to look at it, I just think like this looks like cool and characterful. And, yeah. And they're all really distinct from each other. In terms of profiles, the most underrated profile in the game is the Spider Queen because not everyone thinks that it's the best model, and it is the best model, <laughs> and it's not, and it's not close for tournament play. It's yeah. not, it's not even remotely close. And whenever you talk about it, someone will say something like, "But not necessarily no fate defense for." Yeah. Um, but you know, you learn quite quickly in Lord of the Rings that you need to not get your heroes killed. Uh, yes. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if they're defense four or defense eight. Like you learn don't get it killed and how not to get it killed and then I think you play I've not played to against it once and that was a like a full spider army and i had eagles so i think it came to like so a, nothing got to charge you and then you killed everything it got to a strike off and i obviously killed it in a turn because you knock it yeah. down etc and no it was recon and i playing jack render and he got more than 25 percent off and I managed to kill everything else and get off, and I won like five three or something because he had nice. he had more models, but I'd killed leader, and I think he wounded Guaje was on like one wound no fate by the end of the game because the spider wing queen shanked him. But yeah, yeah, she's basically in for tournament games. There are a number of scenarios which I feel like I should know off the top of my head where moving, either getting to specific points and yeah. not very many of them quickly or getting models off the board, whatever. So like seize the prize, heirlooms, destroy the supplies, um, like breakthrough, recon. storm the camp, recon. So that's like half the scenarios. And she just makes them sort of comedically easy to end. Like you've, if you've not played against the Spider Queen in recon, you probably can't have an opinion on her because <laughs> by the end of turn four, she's got three models off the board. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it because the you only need to get within 23 inches of the board of their board edge with the Spider Queen oh, to the broodlings next turn like... move her, get the broodlings, and then yeah. move them off because they go they go within three inches, which <clears throat> is more like three and a half because their bases are so big because you uh, just yeah. put the oh, gotcha. fraction in, and then they can run ten. So like, and they they're not going to shoot her before that because that's sort of the range of bows. If they're yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah. like ridiculous. And so she'll babysit them, run them off, and then she comes back and kills all your stuff. And she's like got a ten inch move and can run over terrain. So she chase she she runs models off and then chases your models down. It's obscene. It's obscene. <laughs> um, and sort of yeah, sees the prizes the same, heirlooms is the same, and yeah. winning tournaments. People think winning tournaments, and this is true of all games. People think it's about winning games. It's not about winning games. It's about not losing games. Yeah. And so many armies that look great on paper will never be tournament winners because the chances of them winning six or seven games are so low because at some point they're going to come up against an army that's good in recon and recon or, you know, an army that's good at Lords of Battle in Lords of Battle, all these sort of situations um, or a horde that they can't really deal with in a horde-based yeah. scenario. So... That's how I like to sort of build my arms, and that's why the Spider Queen's fantastic because she will just stop you losing those games and yeah. win. I was going to say my my, men, my mentality is always don't try and win big, just try to mm. win to start with. Yeah, don't yeah don't don't push that twelve nil on turn two. Mm. Make sure you've secured like a three nil win, and then push on for the rest. Mm. That's how my mindset always has been. So. Yeah, my, like my main philosophy for building an army is, is all I'm doing moving models around and trying to kill their models? Is that all my army does? Because if that's the best my army can do, it needs to be like damn good at doing it. Yeah. And like sort of like broken levels of doing it. Because otherwise, at some point I'm going to get, I talk quite a lot about being punked. Yeah. Um, we'll get on to sort of like who I, who I think is good and who like I never be. Um. And I'll sort of talk a bit more about that then. Yeah. So, so one last thing on your collection. Are there any specific models that you wish would come back on a made-to-order or back into the range in general? Oh, um, I'm going to echo Dan here, actually. Like, I want all the Mahood models. Yeah. Um, largely because I managed to secure one on the secondary market. Um, I managed to get a, a Mahood King. But I've got like eight painted half-trolls that I just can't lead into battle at the moment. Oh, um, yeah. Until yeah, the that's, King arrives. that's a little awkward. Yeah, um, and yeah, all the Mahud stuff would be great. Um, 
I feel like there are more things, and I'm sure as soon as we've stopped recording, I'll think of a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, um, I was going to say, I know some of the questions I posed for Kalman, uh, he, he kind of was like, oh, that's caught me off guard, because I recorded it just after Dan's video came out, so I don't think he'd had a chance to see it. But yeah, he's... Uh, like, like, I'm certain that I'll, after, later on tonight, maybe as I'm falling asleep, I'll be like mentally designing a list and be like, oh, actually, crap, that model's out of production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I think I think that the the team have done really well at getting the models out there. There were real problems when the this rule set came out with there being very powerful out of production models. Yeah, most like when Kirdan yeah. was un, unreal at the start, and the, literally the only people who had him were the like legacy players. Yeah, I was gonna say, I've, I've had my Kirdan for five years, maybe. Um, a mm. long time I picked up in a white council set like the original plus the metal white council set for like 22 quid 25 quid I was yeah. like I got a right bargain but I know Luke mm. used my kid on for ages um, mm. just it, because it, it was, did, you don't have the access to it you, you can't get it and it's not I think the most frustrating thing for people is is not even when it's like expensive because people are actually happy to spend money on things they want like yeah. if you want a Kurdan badly enough and there's one for 45 quid on eBay that's fine because it means you can get one, but it's when there are literally none. Yeah. Like, because I remember trying to buy one, and my Kurdan's a. Um, I bought one in the made to order, but my one's just a um, Kellerborn with a beard, green stuff on. Because oh, in nice. the books he has a beard. Yeah. Um, I, I know quite a few people have, have gone down that route, especially when, yeah, when, you know, when he wasn't around. Mm. But yeah, I think they've done a really good job at getting those models out there. Things like Kardash as well. And when they were quite like serious role players, like your Mordor army with Kardash is like a proper army. And if yeah. you don't have him and you lose to Terra twice in the tournament, you're just like, oh, great. What a great game. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. So so we'll move on to gaming. Um, do you play any other systems other than SVG? Uh, so I'm about to start playing a um, more time campaign when oh, everyone's allowed nice. outside again. Because um, skirmish skirmish games <laughs> where your like models level up are the best games. Like that's what we all want, and we're all sort of hoping to have enough people who are, you know, able to do that on a week by week basis to do those. And I've played a bit of Battle Companies, um, but Lord of the Rings weirdly doesn't actually lend itself very well to a skirmish game to a sort of um warband game like that because i think i think you have to really put the effort in with your character build like kind of your 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 backstories and all that kind of thing Mm. because lord of the rings and middle earth has such powerful and well-known heroes Mm. trying to create your own that fit in they're still like oh but it's not aragorn or it's not legolas or it's not yeah and like why are these people fighting and blah but (coughs) and also the the way the game is designed is you have very expensive heroes in points and you have cheap troops and the troops are good at ganging up on heroes but the heroes are fundamentally very good at killing troops yeah so after week three of battle companies when all of your companies have played 10 games you've got a bunch of unkillable heroes and you've got a bunch of troops who are just waiting to get killed by them and it's (laughs) it it spirals out of control so fast and there's not really anything you can do about it. Not um, massively. Unless, unless you limit, unless you house rule limits or, or whatnot. Yeah, um, and there are also sort of like three battle companies that are just, you just need to like ban, like right out of the gates because they're just no fun. Um, the Rangers battle company Rangers isn't North. fair. It's like, yeah, yeah fundam- it's fundamentally broken. Um, Army of the Dead isn't great either because... No. Like, you really realize how horrible terror is when all of your models are courage three or two. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, how does the orc army ever beat the army of the dead art battle company? How does that, how do those battle companies ever fight uh, properly? Um, and Iron Hills are the same. Like, so it doesn't, so yeah, I play, I'm about to play more time. Other than that, no, about every year to 18 months, I say this quite a lot, um, every year to 18 months, I like dip my toe into playing 40k with someone. Okay. Um, because the 40k, the like the huge strength of the 40k IP, like the the law or the books or the stories, is amazing. It's fantastic. Um, but the games, like, absolute is an absolute like pile. It's horrible. I was going like, to say you, you I put... mentioned this to Dan and I think to Carmen as well, saying that I I've tried it, didn't enjoy it. Yeah, and I want to love it because the 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 law is all amazing. Um, but 
you put you put a hundred models on the table and then you take thirty of them off and then your opponent takes them off and then you take thirty more off and it's like, oh this was great. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, woo. <laughs> and just rolling loads and loads of dice isn't actually that fun. Um part of the like fun gambling element of war games is things coming down to the roll of a dice. Yeah. Like no, it's it's knowing that if I keep putting five models into that hero a turn, eventually it won't roll. It won't. It'll eventually it'll stop rolling sixes and killing three of them, and it may die. Yes. Or like it'll cost might to do that. Like I can just bury it in a pile of goblins or men of Lake Town or you know Moran and orcs. Um, and when everyone's rolling thirty dice a turn, it's like at once. It's just not the same. No. So uh, I think we've pretty much covered this. You you pay you play or you write lists at least competitively. But do you ever go to tournaments for fun and take so I've, out of the box lists? Yeah, so I've played um, Seven Stones twice um, the last two years, and hopefully we'll play it this year again as well. Um, the list we played last year was... Um, so I like to build like quite funny lists for Seven Stones. Like The first year, we did the Beacons are lit, so it was um, from the scene where the Beacons yeah, are lit. Yeah, yeah. One half of the army was um, Gandalf the White, Pippin, Denethor, um, with um two with some fountain court maybe and then it had uh the two uh, it had two warriors of Minas Tirith from the Minas Tirith beacon yeah. and then it had a Minas Tirith warrior in a fur coat and a ranger put for each beacon and then our objective markers were beacons oh, that's cool and then the other side of the army was aragorn and um Theoden and some rohan dudes on foot um and then last year we did dwarves having seriously bad days. Um, and one half of it was Army of Thraw, um, just after they'd met Smaug. And the other half of it okay. was um, Kazadum, just after they'd met the Balrog. And we'd rock, paper, scissors at the start of every game. And whoever lost their half of the army started set ablaze. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. At, at least you can games, do that with dwarves and they don't all die. Yeah, exactly. In one of the games, there was a river on one side of the board, like three inches on. So that game was great because uh, we won to choose board edge and just walked all our doors into it and nobody took any damage, which was, was I was going to say, that's, that's quite handy. Yeah. Um, so I think I know the answer to the next question. You choose an army or models based on the miniature or on the rules? Yeah, on, on the rules. Uh, what I do want to say is that I... And I say this all the time. I actually really want to play through all the narrative scenarios. Okay. Like yeah. really, really badly. If someone sort of like moved in like down the street and had loads of terrain and all the models, I'm just like, should we play through all of the narrative scenarios? I'd be like, yeah, that's what I'm doing for the next six months. Yeah. Because I really want to. Because I think that's the thing. Because I I compartmentalize it quite a lot. There's like, like I think the game is great. It's designed really well, and I really love the narrative. That's one thing. And trying to write lists to win tournaments is a different thing. Yeah. And I don't need those to be the same. Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's just it's, getting it's around a completely it. different kind of genre and way of playing, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. exactly. And and for for most of the people in the GBHL um, that I hang around with, they've obviously done the competitive bit. Yeah. Or are still doing it, or you know, that sort yeah. of thing. So, so my next question uh, would be, in a pure sense. Do you think there's any factions or legendary legions that are top tier? Uh, yeah, uh, the rangers of Athelion uh, should just be banned at tournaments of less than sort of like six hundred points. Because um, I know it's, you've it's... taken them to a couple. <laughs> yeah, I've won two tournaments with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the um, so I'm you know I'm saying this from experience. Uh, they're not fun. They're not hard to play. Um, they're also not a very expensive army to build, which is no not really a problem but like if suddenly 10 people decided that they wanted to win all the tournaments that were 600 points or less and bought range of the hillian armies they could do it for about 50 quid yeah and which means that it could happen which is bad um range of the hillian make lord of the rings 40k and 40k is rubbish um, <laughs> but yeah they're like seriously not okay um iron hills before their the point change on the ballista yeah, um, they were overpowered. Um, basically, for me, the things that, <laughs> funnily enough, the things that I think are bad and the reason things feel overpowered 
is they tend to be the things that mean people can't bring armies that are fairer. Okay. Um, so, so if you bring if you bring an army of Moranans um, against Rangers at 550 points, say, and you've got like 35 Moranans, yeah, you won't probably won't even have that, will you? You'll have you'll maybe have that. Um, and the Rangers kill like four to five of them a turn. Yeah. So by the time you get to them, you only have 16, 15, 16 Moranans left, and then they just trap and surround you. And yeah. that's your marching defense six army. And yeah, that's not okay. Um, Rivendell Knights uh, are like solidly not quite tier one now yeah. that the Nature's Wrath change has happened. Um, but they do a similar thing. They just like punk you if your army's not very good against being shot really well. Um, yeah, 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 definitely agree. And what that means is you get... Um, you'll notice that these armies are good armies as well, which means... I was going to say, there's not really been... there's not. A, I haven't seen anyone who's found a counter to those kind of armies, but is also good at playing not those armies. Mm. Well, the, part of the reason for it is that... Um, well, the, 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 there's two reasons for it. One, um, evil only has one way to not be bad against shooting. Yep. And that's and it costs 120 points minimum. So yeah. like, and even then, even then, if you're if you're marching your Shadow Lord army into them, mm-hmm. you're still getting hit at 550 odd points with six bow shots a turn. Six yeah. are still hitting, and if they're all going on, you know, the squishy bits, you're still losing models. Um, yeah, I've lost my train of thought slightly there, but yeah, those those are the those are the problem armies. Yeah, the other reason is Rangers just. They still hit you six times through blinding light. It's yeah. horrific. <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, I think everything's like largely fine. Yeah. Um, I, I, th- I think. I think. I think what I've essentially established from talking to people over the last kind of three, this being the third interview, that there are factions that have a set points limit which they're very good at. Yeah. And then, and then, obviously, Ranger the Thillian at seven, eight hundred points. Suddenly becomes yeah, who, who cares? Yeah, yeah, a completely different question. So, so you said you, you said earlier that the Spider Queen, you think is the most OP model in the game. Yeah, yeah, with, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, is there any that rival? Um, Bard with full kit's pretty good. Um, by with... full kit, I mean Alfred plus the girls. So yeah. two hundred and five point Bard, not one hundred and fifty five point Bard, just with yeah. armor. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's pretty good. Um, what else is pretty good? Um, Kurdan was obviously fantastic, but now, like, changing him to a minor hero and the ally rules has actually just fixed him. Yeah, because you yeah, just most can't definitely do, agree. Um, the crazy things you could do anymore. Uh, oh, yeah, Boromir of Gondor. <laughs> he's insane. Um, he's point for point, absolute champion. Absolutely even, fantastic. even with no fate? Yeah, yeah. He, again, like, don't get your heroes killed. Like, <laughs> there aren't that many. There aren't that many times that you get a three wound defense or five or six hero like in a position where he'll die because he's got no fate. Like yeah. a lot of the time, if your hero is going to die, it's because like Dane's just trapped him. And yeah. it's like, who cares how many fate or your defensive <laughs> if Dane traps you or like. I was going to say because I think beast, I watched it like was uh, your GT army against Jay Dunland. If I'm oh correct. god, that game was horrendous. Um, I watched that well, six weeks ago, I think it was, start of lockdown when I was like, right, what should I watch? And yeah, it was, it was one of those, Boromir was doing fine and then got trapped by a couple of heroes. And, and to be fair, that's yeah, just end game for any hero. Any, any hero would have died then, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so. But yeah, he's, he's fantastic because he, he yeah. he's got six might. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And he's got March. And in Good versus Evil, like the Horn of Gondor's a really, really serious bit of equipment. It is very like, handy. When you're, it is very handy. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I played against, I played against a game against Angmar at the GT, um, and I had Lady of Light and Boromir, and Boromir never had to roll the dice to win a fight. Oh wow! He just kept kept like charging two, and they were taking you know courage one, courage tests, and failing, and then getting knocked over and killed. And he's just using all his might to like heroic combat about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's he's fantastic. Um. A lot of the models um that are really strong that spring to mind are good models for good versus evil. Yeah. So Galadriel Lady of Lights, the other example. Yeah. Um because what she brings to the table is just fantastic. Um Thranduil's actually pretty fucking excuse my language, 
pretty pretty crackers. Um, <laughs> like when you when when you you've got them like wandering about on foot. Don't put them on a horse; it's ridiculous. You've got them wandering about on foot, and then your opponent charge. You would charge two models, and then you put a spearman behind him, and your opponent your opponent picks up the dice and goes, "Okay, so my two attacks against your four, and you're like, no, I've got." six attacks actually yeah he's got four and then you you outnumber him technically so he gets another one and he's just like whirling around in all the blades like he does in the movies yeah um and then he makes all your guys cause terror as well which yeah fantastic so what's your favorite points level to play at do you have a set um, bracket or <laughs> i was thinking about this when dan gave his answer i think dan's answer was something like it was five, five, five to six hundred, and then eight hundred to a thousand. And but yeah, he'd won, and, but he'd won the most tournaments at like seven hundred. It was yeah. re- really weird. I think my favorite is six hundred and fifty, exactly. Oh, nice. Um, because I think at that point you just got out of the um, you just got out of the the armies that are really good at low points value points value. And you're not high enough that people can just have whatever they want in their armies. Yeah. So you still have lots of meaningful choices, but you've still got a bunch of points to play with. It's the last point where you start realistically deciding whether you're going to take a banner or not for points reasons. Like okay. that's the sort of, and bearing in mind the armies I play where like often you don't bring a banner because like, that's not really what you're about. Like <laughs> you, you're not about like your rank and file guys all getting an extra dice. Woo. You're about like that hero is now dead. Or I have all those objectives. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I think 650 is pretty good. Um, I don't like 800. I think 800 is rubbish um, because everyone just plays all the good stuff in their army and you don't really have to think about it. Yeah. Like, all the armies. And, um, but like I like I like writing a list and get going sort of like pen and paper right 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 and I'm like how many of these can I fold? I'm like no this doesn't work because I just don't have enough models or this doesn't yeah. work so I can't actually buy this hero this doesn't have any march so yeah six fifty is pretty pretty great cool um, but I really like funny points values like if there was a tournament that was six hundred and thirty seven points I think that would be my favorite <laughs> like really like. Um, Reading is 555 points, isn't it? Because it's their sort of fifth anniversary to Oh, yeah, warfare. I think so. So, like, that's a great points value. Um, because, like, five it, points is yeah. great. I know, um, I know I've seen... I think I've seen a tournament where someone did 666. Um, yeah. I've seen another um, one, and it, it was, like, 744. Or, and you just, like... That's just... Mm. It makes people think completely differently. And they have to go back and yeah, do, like, every army list that they've um, got. When you see an army list, when someone hands you an army list at a tournament and it's like 699 points when it's a 700 point tournament, that makes me feel sick. I was going to say, uh, I, I'm always on, on the spot yeah, if I can. Yeah. Oh, something that drives me crazy, um, absolutely furious, is um, they say it on the Green Dragon podcast quite a lot. And I know, I sort of know what they mean, kind of. But they'll say, they'll say people say this all the time. You say, oh, would you take um, blah, blah in a list? Like, what do you think of model blah or equipment blah or, you know? And they'll go, oh, yeah, if I've got the points, I'd take it. And it's like, well, yeah, if I had the points, I'd take every model. Like, if I had a spare 400 points, I'd take Sauron. Like, it's it's just a stupid, stupid thing to say. Like, like you're always making decisions between models. So saying if I had the points, I'd take it is just, it's totally meaningless. It's almost the same as going, well, it has a profile in the army list. It's like, right <laughs> yeah. or yeah it makes me it makes me furious have you seen <laughs> have you seen this there's, there's quite a famous clip from british television um there's a oh, i can't remember who the chef is there's a chef and he's just made like a an italian dish um and the the person eating it the presenter eating it goes oh, oh this it's is, this um, would be like it's holly willoughby and gino de campo it is, yeah, and and she's like, you know the one I mean, and she's yeah. like, oh yeah, oh, if this had if this had ham in it, it would be like an English carbonara, yeah. and he's like apoplectic. He's like, he, he said something like, if, if, if grandma my grandma had... has wheels, then she'd be a bike. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The I take it if I had the points is just absolutely outrageous. <laughs> or like you'll you'll show someone an army list, um, and um. And go, oh, and they'll go, oh, it doesn't have a banner. And you're like, right, I know it doesn't have a banner. They're like, it probably wants a banner. And you're like, right, great. Now it has to lose 25 points of models. Like, what are they? Like, yeah. what? Obviously, it would be better with a banner. Obviously, it would be better with like three more heroes in it. Oh, yeah, 
ridiculous because obviously I like to think about these things yeah. like if I'm asking someone their opinion on a list I don't want them to just say it needs a banner like oh yeah 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 so so at tournaments do you prefer good <laughs> evil or do you think um, or, or, well, do, I'm, or do you like the blue I'm obviously blue? in two minds about good versus evil um one I get to write twice as many lists which is brilliant yeah. so it, it is always the preference um and if there's a tournament where you can take two lists um, unless I'm trying really hard to win and I've got one army that's like definitely going to be better than the other, um, I'll take two. Um, however, good is favoured against the evil armies. Like, yeah. if you if you went to a if you're regularly going to good versus evil tournaments and trying to win them and losing more with your good army than with your evil army, something really strange is happening. And there are certain combinations of models, obviously, that I've played um, that are insane. If you if you turn up with a line of models that cause terror, say from Thranduil or Kurdan, and a Galadriel of Lady, Lady of Light to make all their stuff have minus one courage, yeah, they're not going to beat you. Um, it, it, it's going to be very difficult, at least. Yeah, exactly. Um, you'd have to really mess it up, or they'd have to have lots of things that are good against terror, which not many evil models are. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting. There's because you really like Angmar. Um, yeah, and I think all the Angmar models are really cool, and I think all their profiles are really cool. But they do have like two glaring weaknesses, which are <laughs> getting shot and terror. Yeah, and most definitely, which, which which means they basically fall in this like really they're like the sort of ugly duckling of armies because if you play good versus evil, like chances are you'll play against shooting, and if you play against terror, it's going to be horrendous for you because <laughs> it's like good side terror. And there are all these armies that, like, like Lady of Light exists. So, like, Angmar can never be, like, winning good versus evil tournaments when it's <laughs> going to play against a Lady of Light. Because um, she just sort of, like, stops all of the stuff against the heroes, makes none of you, mean none of your orcs can charge the terror causing stuff. Yeah. And then, like, blasts all your heroes. It's like, yeah. it's, it, it couldn't be worse. Um, Luckily, I've never had that three... matchup. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. You can, you, yeah, it'll be, it'll be bad. Don't, don't. That's my best advice. <laughs> And then, like, but then when you're playing in, like, um, blue v. blue, people call it, don't they? Um, You can just come up against evil armies with terror. And so you almost, they're almost not great in either. You sort of want to be playing against evil armies. I found found when I play something, generally, if you play good, it is a model that's causing terror. Yeah. Like a bubble effect. Whereas if you're playing evil, it is the models like Black Numenorians, etc. So you can't turn it off with Barrow Whites and killing the model. So so I find coming against a Kirdan or um, a Lady of Light to a certain extent, or Galadriel or Thranduil or something like that, you just go, cool, I'm gonna gonna get rid of his will. However you do it, whether you kill him or you sap will him or you paralyze him, Mm. you're gonna get rid of it. So therefore you, you then regain the ability to charge. Um, mm. But yeah, I normally have en- you, I normally find I have enough more spells than my opponent, so therefore yeah. what they do is really crucial. And if they don't mm. make the right decision, then you pounce on them. I think, I, I think one thing I would change mm. about the game is I think I'd probably just give every troop model, basically, um, one more courage, essentially. Okay. Um, because I think that the game loses a bit of its balance when evil, most evil troops are more likely to fail a courage test than they are to pass it. Yeah, like that. That just doesn't create for fun, fun games. Um, yeah. And there is actually quite a lot of terror, and it's atta- in in good, and it's attached to models that are also good. Yeah. So Kurdan isn't just bringing terror; he's bringing loads of things. So he's playable. Yeah. Um, Thranduil is not just bringing terror; he's like killing all your stuff. Um, Radagast, Radagast had all aura of dismay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then who, what else has it? Like Army of the Dead's like pretty great with terror. So the, the models do exist; they are out there. They don't come with big opportunity costs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Whereas if your orcs are courage three, so they might actually just pass a bunch of the courage tests. That would feel a bit more fair. Maybe yeah. elves I'm probably su- don't surprised... need to be courage six. They don't need to get a plus one courage. Yeah. But... I'm surprised you don't see more. Um, I've thought about this having like a black Numenorian with a warhorn in Mordor armies, or uh, it's it's because uh... it's because it's because if you take a warhorn, you're playing like like five percent down on your opponent, and yeah. they're really easy to kill. 
Yeah. I mean, like people do play Legolas, people do play Siege Engines, people do play sort of. If you if you've got a Warhorn at like five hundred, you can't take one at five hundred. No, points. no, no. I'm thinking seven eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. You can, and that's when like eight hundred you can do it. Seven hundred, you're starting to think about it a bit more. Um, I played one in the season finale last year, um, and uh, so the season finale is a perfect example of why I don't play armies I want to play. I play armies that are good at winning tournaments. Yeah. So re- re-getting punked. So I played against Ed in. I needed to win the tournament and will champion not to win the not to come second to win the league. Okay. Um, which would have been great. Uh, obviously it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> so in round in game three. Uh, I play against Ed in Storm the Camp with his Rivendell Knights. And my yeah. army is like, it's green. I'm playing like full theme ish. Um, <laughs> I'm playing, so my army is um, the Lingering Shadow leading some Gundabads with Spear Shield yeah. and two Warbats. Um, no, it isn't. He's not leading Warbats. He's just leading Gundabads because he's from Dol Guldur. Um Then it's. Um, some sort of hunter orc hero, probably Fimble. Yeah, makes sense. Leading a line of hunter orcs. Uh, and then it's a goblin mercenary captain uh, leading 10 goblin mercenaries and two warbats. So they can't ambush. Yeah. Um, but they're just sort of, he's a marcher and they're sort of cheap troops to gum up like Boromir so they don't yeah. kill me. Um, so I play against Ed in playing Rivendell Knights and Storm the Camp and I can't possibly win because he's really good at shooting and my army's rubbish against shooting. So yeah. my tournament just ends there. I can't yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then later I play against the Rivendell army with Kurdan and Lady of Light and oh, I'm not very good against Terra and I've got a Warhorn but it doesn't matter yeah. and he naturally crushes me as well and I just think to myself yeah, that's good. In the last 18 months, every time I've taken an army that's bad against shooting I've played against Ed with Rivendell Knight. He's beaten me and then he's not podium the tournament because he didn't win Oh god! Other games against other armies. Yeah, yeah, it's it's horrendous. It's horrendous every time. And like, I'll be talking about like what lists are good and what you can play to win tournaments. And people say, oh, like the only person that plays like knights is Ed or whatever. And you say, yeah, but Ed will consistently go four and two at tournaments. Yeah. So chances are, if you want to win the tournament, you're probably more likely to play him than not. Yeah. Um. And yeah. Getting punked, getting punked is rubbish. Like turning up with an army with a weakness and then playing against that weakness is oh, it can be not fun. It can be frustrating. But 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 conversely, the game is really well designed. And if your aim at tournaments is to get a winning record, you can do that with any army, yeah. any army list. You can definitely do it um, through like tight play and a reasonable army list. And that's brilliant. That's where you want the game to be. Yeah. So what? awards do you like to see given out at tournaments oh I'll, i don't care i okay, really don't care at all I, I was thinking about i was trying to think of an answer for this i okay i'd say best painted's a nice one because it's nice to look at the pretty yeah. things um most sporting's fine because someone is the most sporting yeah. normally the person that wins most sporting is either someone i know who is nice or it's someone who didn't win many games and looks nice. And yeah. I'm happy for them when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think first, second, and third are pretty good awards. Um, yeah. Although second and third are, you know, not first. So they're basically the same as the other ones. Depends on the price. Um, yeah, yeah. The wooden spoon. The wooden spoon is great. Because, not especially if there is a spoon. Yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a wooden spoon from a Blood Bowl tournament I played <laughs> that has the tournament sort of like logo like heated heat burn oh, nice. into the natural word for that i'm sure um and that that is a wooden spoon in my kitchen that i use for stirring pots of food because <laughs> it's a wooden spoon and yeah, so that's what it's for and whenever i'm like stirring the beans of a sunday fry up i think oh, that was a nice tournament stir 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 yeah apart from that i don't i largely don't largely don't care yeah, um I think raffles at tournaments are um, really fun, nice ideas, but ultimately horrible. They um, can take a while. They go that's, on for so long, I and some, especially at the end of a weekend. Especially at the end of a week. Especially at the end of a weekend. 
Yeah, well, someone in your car's good. always bought tickets without telling everyone. And then like the rest of you thought you weren't buying tickets, so you've not bought tickets. Yeah. So not only do you have to wait for this person in the raffle that goes on for an hour and a half rather than 45 minutes, but you don't even have like a whole, you don't have skin in the game. Yeah. So you're just like, great. Yeah. And like, oh, and people cheer. People like cheering at raffles. It's like, it was literally <laughs> a random number pulled out of the hat. Like this is, yeah. But I love that. I love that I hate that. And, and, yeah. and feeling that feeling is quite fun. And that makes up for the horrendous raffle. Um, I think it's nice when tournaments try and do more with the like best stuff. Like, yeah. I think having a sort of best theme is quite a nice thing. Um, but ultimately, like we've all seen the themes. I think there's a certain point where people who have pretty armies should stop entering them for best army. I think once a, once you win a best army award with a or best painted award with an army at a big enough tournament like if you win best painted at a 20-man tournament fair enough if you win best painted at like a 70-man monstrosity yeah like don't enter it in the 30-day one the 30-player one two months later like yeah i do i do kind of know what you mean and i i know when talking to friends of mine who who have done that and they are incredible painters <laughs> i specifically tell them i'm not voting for you yeah i'm not voting for you i voted gonna... for you being the best army in the past yeah so i'm gonna go and look at something else and they and and they're like yeah cool fine mm. so there was someone someone at um someone at uh cardiff this year had um their display board was playing music that was mike uh, tetley that was yeah. mike tetley because he kept walking yeah. away with his phone because it was a bluetooth speaker and it kept going off <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was absolutely fantastic like that, that was, was... I, that's something i've never seen yeah and i was like that's really cool and it's the kind of thing that you occasionally sort of like think about maybe doing, but then you're like, do I actually, yeah, how would I actually go about that with the, um, but yeah, the awards like largely, I don't mind. I think sort of like spot prizes for things are good. Like, you know, when it's like first person to kill their general with a throwing spear on yeah. turn six, like that sort of thing. That's fun. Anything that just like gives you like extra mini games is quite fun. Um, and especially when they're, um, because what they do is they allow for the tournament to mean a lot to more people, which is is, is yeah. great. Like, yeah, yeah, I definitely you... get. I definitely get that. And understand. Yeah, I, it... that's why I try and take a, a themed and pure army that's slightly more competitive, so that I can still have that satisfaction of winning games with an army that I love. Yeah, I, you said something really interesting um, on when you were speaking to Dan, which I've been talking to um dave farmer a lot about lists recently he's become my sort of Go because to. ryan hinch has been sort of like not wanting to win tournaments as badly i've needed a new person to talk to lists about <laughs> and it's fallen to dave um he he sort of likes to he, he he wants to win a tournament with a list that he has made that is his thing yeah like like and he said that like at times much like you he said um that he's played lists that were like overpowered um, and he knew were fantastic, but like didn't actually have a good time with them. Didn't necessarily yeah. win as much as expected. Um, and I think you probably expect at any given tournament to go to like go four wins and two losses, right? That's what you yeah, expect. My, is my, your aim minimum, is, right? my aim is always like that would going, be your going, three three would be bad, four two is fine, five one is good, six zero oh is perfect. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and when you play, if you play a list that's your baby. The whole tournament is fun because you're like, I'm playing my list and seeing if I can win with my list that I've made. Does it all work? It's brilliant. If you're playing, it's much like I was saying about painting before. If you play a list that you know is a tournament winner, every game's a test. Yeah. Because you know the list is good enough to win the tournament. So any mistake you make is on you because oh, yeah. you didn't know how it worked properly and that sort of thing. And I've talked a lot about... Um, <laughs> I said basically up until the end of last season of the GBHL, I basically always said I was crap because I, I'm pretty confident I'm still pretty crap. Um, <laughs> now on their acts, I've been around the block a few times, but like I'd still make horrendous plays and like I'd have a, a game of tournament that I lost because I just didn't, wasn't experienced enough. Yeah. Um, when I got to the end of the season and came forth and could have won the league with the last tournament, I sort of had to scale that back a bit. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you, you, you have no right to say that. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly but like when i played against you for example um the game you referenced earlier we had um it was a great game you were basically winning and if the game had gone on for like 20 more minutes or even 10 more minutes you would have won 
I lost track of time on that one. I thought yeah. I, I misjudged the time. I misread the clock. I can't remember what I did. It was one of those things, and I thought we had an extra half an hour. So when they were like, oh, five yeah. minutes left, I was like, basically, and I, I learned a big lesson in that game. And the lesson I learned was um, the clock is really important, obviously. Yeah, oh, but like, I, I learned exactly the same. Just make cause, sure cause, you know what time it is. Yeah, because we moved around and did loads of shooting for a bit. And then we knew that when combat hit, there was going to be at most three turns of combat. Yeah, pretty much. Because, because by that point, either I'd have got pretty lucky and you'd have lost loads of elves, or you'd have just cut through all my low defense Harrods and yeah. got to the middle. Because I had a six-inch banner, three turns of combat actually is six turns of combat in yeah. terms of how many dice are rolled. And I realized that after that game, I was like, wow, just picking up a dice and re-rolling it every combat. Oh, it's just huge. like it, makes makes such a difference it's so quick and it's how sort of ali king's army of thrall always ends up like with like way more time than it way less time than their opponent expects because the dwarves die slowly and they're all re-rolling dice i was gonna say i i always take a banner for the re-roll it's not for the vps or anything the vps are a bonus mm. it, it's the banner for the for the re-roll but yeah like you say it takes an extra extra time special strikes yeah each, each of those turns everything. of combat takes like more minutes and then then they're all gone yeah so, uh, sticking with events, are there any events, obviously post lockdown, that you are hoping to attend, that you're looking forward to? Yeah. So, um, I've so basically there are loads of events in the calendar that are just fantastic. Seven Stones is amazing. The only the only bad thing about Seven Stones is there aren't enough places at it that all the cool people that you like that you want to be there get to be there. Yeah. Like there are always people the who wish <laughs> Yeah, um, Steve Crow's events are fantastic because he's got some really gorgeous boards, yeah. um, like really fantastic ones. Um, I got to do some quite fun things on the sort of Bree board where I was flying my warbats down and trying to pluck and explode a bomb. Oh, wow. Um, oh, cool. As the, using their sort of flyover rule. <laughs> um, and it was, it was, um, why can't I remember the name scenario? Fog of War. It was Fog of War. And they just like spent the game like on top of buildings harrying heroes trying to like poke them for wounds. Which is pretty good. Um, yeah, that one's pretty great. Um, the GT is really fun as well because it's just huge and at Warhammer World. Yeah. And basically the bigger tournaments are great. Um, any of the ones at Stockport are fantastic because you can sort of party it up in the venue without having to go out. Yeah, that's always Which makes quite a big difference. Mm. So, coming on to players, and you you mentioned you were going to talk about it a bit later. Which player or army do you struggle against? That you don't have a winning record against? Uh, I don't have a winning record against Ed. Uh, well, basically, the three players are Ed, Will Champion, and Jay, because they're all considerably better than I am. Yep. Like, and it's not it's not even close it's not the same sort of it's not in the same sort of league category of skill either so it's like i know in those games i'll make mistakes so if i'm playing against them at a scenario where my arm army isn't favored i'm almost certainly going to lose yeah if i'm playing against them where it's even i'm probably going to lose and if i'm playing when i'm favored i still might lose and that's yeah. pretty ropey <laughs> yeah um, it's a pretty daunting thought when you kind of like you're like right i've got to play out of my skin yeah, my my record against Will Champion is he's won three. We've drawn one. No, we he's won three. I've won three. I think. And the reason for that is at Reading Warfare Reading last year, um, I got to play against his Corsairs with my Rangers twice in scenarios where he had to walk the length of the board yes. against me. No, so I, I just shot that. him and he died. Um, yeah. And which it was really bad because if I'd had his tournament, I'd have I'd have been like miserable at the end. Like he basically might as well have not turned up to the event because he got horrible matchups twice and lost them. Yeah. Um against Jay, I'm one one. Um okay. but got pretty lucky to win the one I won. Yeah. Um, and in the one he won, I got quite unlucky, but I didn't play super well. Um was that the um, GT in, one we referenced in, uh, reference then? Yeah, yeah. So like the, that game's really interesting because it's actually like why I lose looks really simple and it looks like I'm total garbage. <laughs> um, but what actually happens is um, I lose a bunch of 50-50s in a row. Yeah. So I lose 
So I lose um, the turn before our armies meet. I lose priority, which means he's walking towards me and I'm shooting him. So I lose priority on that turn, which means instead of him moving towards me and me getting a set of charges, um, I'm going to have to risk a heroic next turn. Yeah. So I charge him with all my heroes, kill some troops. The next turn, I lose uh, the heroic move off, which is bad. Yeah. Um, then I lose the heroic combat off. Uh, yes. So that his heroic combat goes before me, so my Boromir can't <clears throat> protect my Theodred, which means he's going to kill my Theodred and then my Boromir. Yeah. And then I lose the strike off with my Theodred, so that I can't even try and win that fight. Oh. God. So I lose four. I lose three. I lose three fifty fifties <laughs> in a row, all of which even it back up again. And then the strike off Jay's quality, so he strikes with two heroes, so that he's got two bites at the apple. Yeah. Um, so he strikes up to 10, I strike up to 9, he kills me, then he kills my Boromir, and then the game's over. Yeah. So it looks like, but it, what it looks like happens is, he charges me, heroic combat and heroic strikes one hero, kills the other one, and the game ends. Yeah. But what actually happened was, bad, yeah. bad, bad things happened to me. <laughs> um, but I, I almost certainly could have done something to not put myself in that position. Yeah. So I definitely played poorly. Um, and Jay's not in a bad spot if he loses any of those either. So it uh, doesn't yeah, really close. matter if he loses the first heroic move because I'm probably just going to blend troops and he can have another crack next turn. Um, if I... Uh, sorry, the priority, I just get to do good things. The move, he doesn't go too badly. The combat, um, he probably he's still getting a heroic strike off against my Theodrin and maybe killing it. Um, yeah, he's still, he's still combat so like, striking off Theodrin, isn't he? So he's expecting to kill that and something else, whether it be Boromir or troops is... is... Um, yeah, exactly. So he's still in he's still in good shape, um, but yeah, yeah, boo. Uh, <laughs> I expect to lose to Jay next time I play him, for example. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and against Ed, Ed just keeps punking me. Um, Ed punks me with his shooting armies. He punked me at the GT year before last with a shooting army, um, and then I punked him at my first hundred point win. Um, oh, so the best thing, the absolute best thing about Red Alliance is was people not really knowing how they worked because no one played them. Yeah. So I won like half a dozen games um, at uh, 100 pointers by people not realizing the rest of my models were going to get to move after my heroic. Oh, yes. So I'd call yeah. a heroic with like Gurrit, <clears throat> move all of my orc. Um, with Gurrit, move all my orcs, uh, charge a bunch of stuff. They'd counter charge everything. Or, uh, and then the Spider Queen would charge around the flank to get an amazing hurl. Yeah, because she doesn't get to move in the heroic because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a red alliance um, and that happened against Ed in the final of um, City of Kings last year okay. where um, I call a heroic move with the spider queen um, was it with the spider queen? yeah it must have been yeah, yeah I call a heroic move with the spider queen we started next to each other um, she goes first, the bat charges um, Radagast the Spider Queen, uh, one of the broodlings charges Elrond, and the Spider Queen charges a couple of Rivendell Knights. Yeah. And then Ed charges all of my orcs. And then all the other orcs come around and trap them. Oh, God. Because he doesn't realize <laughs> it. Um, a similar thing happened against um, Jasmine at a tournament later in the year where um, we're playing Seize the Prize. Um, I call a heroic march. Uh, Jasmine calls a heroic march. Um, I march up into the middle, she marches up into the middle, um, and then the Spider Queen, uh, and then so she marches into the middle, I march into the middle, the Shadow Lord uh, compels a knight forward, the Spider Queen then charges the knight, yeah. heroic combats off it with all the broodlings, charges someone else, and then throws it into Boromir, because oh, that's something that can happen. Yeah, um, yeah that, was, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> And then people sort of wise up to it after it happens to someone they know and it never happens again. Yeah. So out of those three, who would you say is the best player you've ever played? Um, or is it kind of quite a level playing field? They're all really different players, which is interesting because I would put them all in the same category. Um, yeah. Ed, Ed plays a really sort of like clinical game where his list is basically designed to like play a slightly different game to SVG. Yeah. Like he's not actually playing the game that most people are playing. He's playing a different game where he's sort of like trying to score these victory points here and then move around like here. And yeah. it, it, it just plays very differently. Um, Will has shown unbelievable range throughout the last sort of 18 months, like playing different yeah. armies and winning oh, with massively. them and coming up with cool concepts. Um, 
like will will build a list and i'll think that's really cool why didn't i think that amazing um and when you play jay you're just like yeah you're just magnificent at this jay you yeah. just obviously know what you're doing and yeah. all of your model moving is right and <laughs> yeah so jay's like top tier top top tier so is there a favorite game that sticks in your mind or a specific moment in a game uh to be, no not not really i mean i don't tend to do anything that's that exciting that i didn't know my models were going to be able to do anyway okay um so the things that stick out are things like um will shooting my shadow lord off the fell beast on turn one that was pretty rough um, oh wow they did have 20 bows so you know it could yeah. happen um, <laughs> yeah it's definitely a possibility <laughs> yeah my least favorite part of the games themselves uh is heroic striking i consider yeah. my sort of ethos for the game is that if i'm ever heroic striking and you're heroic striking the game has gone horribly wrong yeah i, was because... gonna say, I try to t- i tend to try and avoid strike off yeah they're just because you're just unreliable yeah exactly and you're just like that this obviously doesn't count ones like if they've only got three attacks and you've got like dane and yeah. they're you've got the charge like and they're not realistically going to be able to kill you but most of the time if you're both striking someone's done something wrong and something's going to go badly and you can just get like randomly punked yeah so I just don't want to be doing it I don't build my list to want to be any good at striking and people are like oh your list doesn't have any heroic strike I'm like good <laughs> good i don't want to be heroic striking it'll be horrible horrible i like to have it in there just in case to be honest yeah because it's nice when the hero runs out of might to be able to just like move this model there say yeah. heroic strike and then it'd be dead yeah um but yeah so Ooh. do you have a favorite tournament uh in in the calendar yeah in the calendar whether it be GBHL stones or Stone, stones is the best tournament stones, stones is the best tournament without without a shadow of a doubt <laughs> like it's got everything it's got like sunshine it's got curry it's got food um i've managed to win um a like best theme sort of card nomination every oh, nice. every year of the two that i've been there so i want to try and keep that up um we've got quite a good idea for the next one ish yeah. but in the pipeline mm, yeah because what you're trying to do is you're basically trying to be like themey to the books or films an army that like n- like nerfs itself that isn't yeah. too competitive <laughs> and you also want there to be some element of humor as well and yeah. trying to get all those because re- like the films are you know fundamentally quite serious oh um, <laughs> um, yeah yeah it's kind of end of the world apocalypse style yeah yeah if it's it go- like if it goes it's wrong. a big deal it's a big deal everyone knows it's a big deal yeah. oh that's good then so um the last question from me is what's the furthest you've traveled to play SPG? Uh, so I've traveled to Sterling. I went to Sterling in my first year. It was yeah. like my fourth tournament, which I think is what meant I couldn't get best newcomer last year. Okay. Uh, which was very sad. Uh, went to that. That was fine. I didn't really know anyone at that point. I'd not been playing very long. Okay. Um, Cause how, so I didn't how make the most of it. that from you? Oh, um, like a Should six hour drive? Uh, yeah, probably something like that. Nottingham to Stirling. Uh, it is a five hour and six minute drive, uh, okay. um, 300 miles. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, and then um, I was going to go play the ETC before it was postponed this year, which was going to be in Ireland, uh, which I think looking at the map is actually less far away, <laughs> um, but does involve more water. Oh, that's good then. Um, but road trips, road trips are basically great. Yeah, road trips. Like, once, on the once way there, a group of friends. On the way there, you can be. On the way there, you're excited, and on the way back, normally there's loads to chat about. Yeah, yeah. We we find we do kind of a, a tournament review on the way home. Each person talks about their games and what they think went wrong, what went right, etc. And it's always a good laugh. Because mm. especially if someone's tired on day two, and you go, "What? Why on earth did you do that?" And they're like. I've actually because no, I'm dead hungover. I have, I have I'm my, no reason. Yeah. I have no reason. I just did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I really like about the game that I meant to mention earlier is like new supplements. Uh, yeah, like my jam. Like, like a supplement coming out with like six profiles <laughs> and like six legendary legions is just like brilliant because that because I like building lists. 
that changes it up and yeah. there are new things to do things with. Um, I think the fact that two new Ent profiles came out that were alliable with everything, um, uh, yeah, but for, then for you got the yellow, rough yeah. got the rough end of the, and then they got the rough end of the um, errata. So now you can't play them in anything. Was like really, really, really and sad. Neither of them Valak. No, no, they both fought shoot, did they? Yeah, uh, okay. which and we had we had some absolutely, and one of them had March, so you could put a, mon, a monster with three might and March into your list for like 140 points. And Ryan and I had some absolutely filthy move. lists. And he's eight inch move as well, isn't he, Cook Green? Yeah, we had some yeah. filthy lists where you're like Gua here and um, quick beaming and Iron Hills Dwarves, and you're basically like chucking, you're like hurling into your other monsters. Hero yeah. at combat and not knocking that down and knocking all the models down yeah. and just like having like really maneuverable stuff. Um, but yeah, that was pretty sad. Hey, hey. Um, I've got a list that I'm quite excited to play at 700 points. At 700 points, you can take um, something like 27 orcs, Burder, a banner, a shade, the Spider Queen, and a Felwag, and the Shadow Lord, and one tracker. And you just keep oh. the tracker and the felwog in the back two corners of the board, so you're never going to break. And you've still got like the old Red Alliance list that I played, oh, but with like Burda. Nice. Nice. I think that'd be quite exciting. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully there's a seven hundred point. Oh yeah. Sorry, game. shades are over. I, sorry, shades are broken. Yeah, models that are broken. They've the shade. The shade is horrible. To a certain extent. Sorry? They've been fixed to a certain extent with the Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And and for for me as an Angmar player, a shade should only be an Angmar. It should only affect yeah, Angmar absolutely. models. That like yeah. that was a simple for me, that was a simple fix. You say it only affects uh enemies who are fighting Angmar models with Angmar keyword sword, and that's what they did. Yeah. And, yeah. and no one no one's the best part about the shade is that like no one has ever pretended that it's anything other than like totally lame to play against. Yeah. Like if Jay had if Jay had said, um so in this errata, Kurdan's going down to a minor hero, some changes to the ally rules. And we've also sent someone with a Games Workshop lanyard to everyone's house with a shade with a big hammer and a £20 note. Yeah. And they're going to hit the shade with the hammer and they're going to give you the £20 note. Everyone would be like, yeah, you know what? That's probably fair enough. <laughs> like, like it's... Yeah, the problem with the shade is that people think that how, pe how unlikely it makes you to win a combat is actually way worse than people think. Like it, people think really, that people really think that it makes you like it's like pretty bad, but it's actually like it's well, you're never gonna win the game now. Yeah. Bad. I was gonna say I always have shade, and then I always have a banner nearby as well. So for me, it's yeah. like right. So I've got an orc with a spear support, with a banner, and you're at minus one. Yeah, fine, yeah. fine. Yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for joining me, Matt. Um, I think it's been a really, really interesting chat. Um, me and you've had many conversations outside with a beer. Mm, and I'm sure we'll have many more. Stuff. Yes, we most definitely will. Uh, so if you have uh, liked this video or you've got any more questions for Matt, please drop them in the comments below. Um, other than that, please comment, like, share and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.